Hello, Pittsburgh. Welcome back and welcome to A-plus Schools Education Update. I'm Michelle Massey, Director of Research and Communications at A-plus Schools. This month, we're going to be talking to Jessica Rosario and Sequoia Reed, who are both our, two of our parent advocates in the Parent Nation program. Then stay tuned after this very short video to learn more about how parents and are taking action in leading changes in school buildings across the district. And remember to check out our website, www.aplusschools.org, for updates and more information about the program. What I'm working on uh, most as a parent with A-plus schools is um, how to bring change to better our children's education and their abilities to absorb information. This year, with A-plus schools' help, my team at Faison Elementary School, we were able to put on two restorative practices sessions for the community of East Hills and Homewood. So we were able to pull in educators, parents, and um, just the students to talk about restorative practices at Faison. I actually got a chance to go on an um, educational learning trip to Denver with A+. Plus, and we went and we explored different schools out there who are more experienced in restorative practices. And they trained us and gave us, you know, different tips and knowledge on how to better and implement it into our school setting. I've been on some site visits with A-plus schools, so by going on some of those trips has opened up my eyes to what can be done and what should be done. Recently, along with Leon Blair, I had the opportunity to facilitate the school board candidate forum, and through that opportunity, I was able to not only meet people who could have been possibly representing my school district, but I was also able to give them a youth perspective that they might not usually hear. The success that I've had in advocating for my children's education was being able to get an IEP for my daughter who has a mental health illness. I was told that I could not get an IEP for her, but I was persistent and stated the reasons and provided the information and was able to get the IEP that I needed for her. I was involved in the nurse campaign, um, yes, because I, I felt like that was one of the things that we needed more of in school is more nurses and more time in the school day that the nurses would stay there. We all came together and collectively and got nurses in the school all next year. So they taught us a lot on how to get what we want in the schools that may not come right away. They also taught us that it takes time and a lot of dedication and hard work. We were getting ready for a public hearing. It was our first one. And thankfully, a was there to give feedback on our speeches really just standing with us very solidly and saying, you know, this is your show, but this is what we can do to help you along. So it's things like that that say, oh, I have friends in this, I'm going to be all right. You just watched one of four videos that A Plus Schools recently produced to introduce you to our parents and student advocates that work with us every day and that are doing all their best in, in their highest way, or I'm sorry, and who are doing their best to promote the highest achievements in educational character development for every Pittsburgh Public School student. And today we're joined by two of our very active parents, once again, Sequoia Reed and Jessica Rosario. Um, they were featured in the video and we welcome them to the program today. So thank you for joining us. Um, there was a lot packed into that two-minute clip, and we're going to unpack a little bit of it today. We're going to talk specifically about the school nurse campaign, which was mentioned a couple times, and a campaign for um, more nutritious meal programs in the schools. Um, so can you both tell our audience a little bit about yourselves, um, the schools that your children attend, and uh, what got you involved in A-plus schools? Um, sure, yeah. Sure. Uh, so y'all know my name is Jessica. Um, this is my first year working with the education system um, at all. My son just started kindergarten this last year, so he's going into the first grade. Um, and so um, just the fact that he was going to being in a building, a building outside of my home, I wanted to be directly involved. You know, it's just like kind of natural to me to want to see how my kid, uh, you know, what my kid is learning and you know, the environment that he's in. So 
And which school is he at? Oh, I'm sorry, he's at Grandview Elementary. Yeah. yeah. And Sequoia? Um, so, <laughs> I have three daughters and I have chosen to pursue education for the older two outside of Pittsburgh Public and then I have my baby girl who will be an eighth grader this year at one of the Pittsburgh 6 through 8 schools um, in close to the East End. Okay. Now what got you um, involved in A-plus schools? What really got it on your radar? <laughs> Uh, so, I, it's a funny story, so I'll, I'll try to tell the story quickly, but I was making dinner for my kids, this guy shows up to my door, he's like in khakis and a collared shirt, and I'm like, I don't want to buy cable, <laughs> so I don't, and he said, you know, hey, I'm so-and-so, we met in front of your kid's school, I was just following up on an appointment we had to talk about parent engagement, and I'm like, well, I'm making dinner, I have to clean the kitchen, the kids will be home soon, but you can come in and have dinner and talk with us if you want. So uh, he comes in and we start talking about uh, some of the issues I felt were important around my children's education mm -hmm. in Pittsburgh Public at the time. And later on, uh, through the structuring and uh, development of a parent-led program with Pep Rally at Arsenal, uh, I met Amy Matson, who is the director of, now the director of parent engagement with A Plus Schools. And we uh, were able to construct the program, kick it off, and sustain it for, uh, well, this year will be our fourth school year. And through that, we've been maintaining a close relationship with A-plus schools. Great. And Jessica, how's your, no one showed up at your door? Or? <laughs> no one showed up, my, up at my door, no. This, uh, I, I guess I found them on my own just through, you know, involvement with Grandview Elementary. Great. Um, yeah, met Amy and... You know, love at first sight. All right. <laughs> well, we'll dig a little deeper into those connections. But uh, Sequoia, I want to go back to you. You talked about kind of, um, you know, this is long-term engagement. You know, things happen. Somebody showed up and said, let's figure out how to engage and, and be more involved with your, your students' education. So let's talk specifically about that school nurse campaign, because that was recently a pretty big win. Um, Pittsburgh Public Schools, through their strategic plan, announced that they want to have a school nurse in every building every day. So uh, a lot of people don't understand why that's important. So right. tell us a little bit more. Uh, so through uh, an organizer training and retreat that uh, ha involved parents from Citywide, so some of the parents from Grandview, King, Arsenal, uh, came together and after going through some rigorous uh, trainings, we decided that you know we wanted to take action because it's one thing to inform, but at the end of the day, you want to be able to maximize what you've worked on. So we decided um, on the issues that were important to us, and there, there were more than one, but we decided that having a nurse in every building every day would keep students in the classroom and not either sitting in the office waiting for ice packs or hot packs or Band-Aids um, or just being sent home because there wasn't a medical professional there to care for them that day. So it really comes down to keeping kids in a classroom engaged and learning as right. they should be, right. as opposed to taking out of school for a particular reason and that reason being that there's no medical personnel that can adhere to their needs at the time. Right, there's also uh, some uh, safety components that came up uh, during our work um, and we felt like there needed to be for certain things definitely an RN uh, who a certified school nurse who needed to be available to help children with certain things. It couldn't be the secretary, it couldn't be another teacher. It needed to be a licensed medical professional handling certain things. We also found that some schools had um, more of a need than others. Mm -hmm. So there were some inequities in how the nurses were being distributed, which we found if we had a nurse in the schools every day, especially in those that had the highest need, that could alleviate some of those problems with safety and absenteeism. Well, take us through the campaign a little bit. Um, you mentioned that there was more than one issue, so you came yeah. to you know, <coughs> consensus that this would be the issue that you followed through on. Right. So um, give our audience an idea of what the campaign development looked like and how you right. carried it through. Uh, so over the, uh, that weekend, uh, like I said, it was an organizing retreat for parents. And after going through some rigorous training, we sat down, we uh, went through things that we felt were important to us. So everyone had the opportunity to voice their opinion on what issues they felt uh, were impacting their child's education the most. So 
um, things like too many students on a school bus, things like not enough crossing guards, things like kids maybe having to walk too far to get to school. Uh, some parents had, you know, maybe some negative experiences with school staff that they wanted to try to uh, find out how to navigate those types of issues. Um, but at the end of the day, we felt like a student's overall health and well-being was more of a priority mm -hmm. than some of these other things. Uh, so we then started doing research. So A plus schools supported us. Um, their parent organizers got together. I mean, we had to visit websites like the um, Pennsylvania Nurses Association and things like that to make sure that we knew what the scope was, what the qualifications for a school nurse were. And before we started demanding, you know, things. We needed to make sure that we had done the research. You know, how many nurses are there? How many schools are there? What schools need them the most? Um, and then we found that there were other organizations who wanted to be a part of the campaign and who wanted to e even provide services for schools that didn't have a nurse every day. So uh, we connected with some RNs who were working with the Caremobile at the time, and they came on as a part of the campaign advisory board. Mm -hmm. Dr. Dara Ware Allen, who is uh, director of student services, or um, pardon me if I mess up that title, uh, but she was a part of those talks, you know, after we had gotten all of our research together. We started meeting frequently. Um, I can't remember her name, but she's basically like the manager for nurses with Pittsburgh Public. Um, so she was definitely involved in those meetings. And we went through and, you know, we there was some back and forth about, you know, what it would look like and, you know, can we afford this? Mm -hmm. You know, can we afford to have a medical professional, you know, every day? There's uh, different levels of education that are required and, you know, all kinds of nuances of the campaign that we needed to filter through before we could come to, okay, now that we know all of that, you've given your side, we've given our side, you know, this is what we still want. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm hearing is that it definitely took a lot of research, again, um, doing your homework, telling your kids to do your homework so adults have to do their homework <laughs> too on issues, um, doing your homework, being diligent, uh, making sure that you have all of your facts, looking at things from a budgetary matter as well as a safety, health, well-being matter for children and, and the impact that it's going to have on kids and their families. Right. Um, and still being able to take your case and your cause to the board and working with the board. You, you work directly with the school board. So all of these uh, components, they eventually got to a win. Right. But how long did that take? So we had that organizing retreat in August of 2015. <laughs> so... Uh, and then it wasn't until September of 2016 that we actually showed up to a public hearing with a group of parents to give testimony on why we thought that this was an important issue and what we were asking for to have a school nurse in every building every day. And it wasn't until spring of 2017 that yes. the school board made the commitment yes. to doing so. Yes, yeah, so the school board has um, committed to several hundred thousand dollars in student health services line item of the upcoming budget to support uh, schools and having a nurse as much as possible throughout the school week. Okay, well congratulations on that. <laughs> yeah. Now I imagine that there probably were moments though where there were challenges or where you felt like why are we doing this? Oh, we can be doing other things or we all have <laughs> families that demand our time and attention too. How do you overcome that and, and, and keep people from fizzling out of the campaign? So we did uh, have some parents who had to disengage for you know one reason or another, um, but especially because I work in healthcare, as you know, one of my other faces or hats that I wear, I felt like it was extremely important. So for me, that was enough to keep me motivated. Sometimes I understand that parents just experience barriers, social, personal, emotional, that they just can't continue to do the work. We understand that, but I want those parents to know that you're always welcome to come back. You know, so when you sort out whatever you need to sort out, there's always work to be done. So I like that there is always work to be done for sure. Um, now this leads me into Jessica because we touched a lot on health, well-being, mm -hmm. um, and this is another vein of it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the work sure. that you're doing, um, 
Introduce our audience to your campaign and why it's important. Um, wow. So just listening to Sequoia, I feel like I'm learning so much from you because this is all uh, a very new campaign. Um, this is something I just started working on um, like middle of the school year to, of 2017. Um, so my big thing is that what children are putting into their stomachs, um, you know, what you are is what you eat. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, in the, unless these kids and human beings in general, but particularly growing minds, unless they're getting the proper nutrients that their brains and their bodies need to develop, they're not, um, they're not able to function on like a cognitive level that they should be. Um, uh, um, what was the question? Well, <laughs> just to introduce us to your campaign, what okay. made you take notice so of okay. this issue and, okay. and why it was important? Um, I took notice of this issue simply just by seeing the food. I have become uh, very persistent and diligent in learning about nutrition uh, pretty much probably since I got pregnant, you know what I mean? Um, taking notice with that as well as uh, looking into healing my own body just like, you know, through personal health issues and whatnot. So I came to know a lot about how the food that I'm putting into my body is affecting my brain and my body function. And so I go to school and I'm in the cafeteria and I'm you know, working with these kids on a daily basis. And the food is, I, I'm not like trying to you know, say anything negative, but it is extremely low quality food that has a shelf life of Lord knows how long. Mm -hmm. And um, there's also no kitchen in our school, so the meals aren't being uh, made to order. Um, so the meals are being individually packaged and then heated up inside of plastic and then thrown in the garbage by the students because the kids are pretty grossed out by them um, as well. And um, so not only that, um, you know, my biggest issue with, with that is the artificial substances that are in all of those foods mm -hmm. because they're not fresh foods. They're not being made to order. They did add some fresh fruits and vegetables to the cafeterias this year, um, which is nice to see. Kids do tend to eat the carrots and the apples. Okay. Um, but as far as um, the, like the, anything that's warmed, um, same thing with like the, show, the fruit cups that are, you know, in an artificial syrup. Um, the big thing with the artificials is that it's being directly linked to, um, many different cognitive de deficits, ADHD, directly linked, um, increased aggression, um, low test scores. They started taking these substances in 50s, 60s, 70s, and started doing research on these because obviously companies were putting them in food. Mm -hmm. And they found that children who were labeled as problematic, once these substances were removed from their diet, and they were replaced with omega-3s and other like um, phytonutrients like vitamin A, vitamin B, um, you know, all that good stuff that comes along with eating whole foods. Not only did their, um, their behavioral problems diminish, but their test scores also went up immediately. And so we're in a school system, not just in Pittsburgh, but also as a nation where test scores are just plummeting, mm -hmm. plummeting. The achievement gap is growing. Most children, by the time they don't get to third grade, they can't read at a third grade level, you know, and that's that's disturbing to me. And I think and in Pittsburgh it was saying that only 47 percent, so that leaves 53 percent of students are not reading. So by third more grade. more than half of our students are not reading at, at a third level. grade level, and um, and so you know people are wondering why, what could it be, what could it be? Well, they're going hungry, they're coming to school, they're getting a super sugary breakfast. I don't know about you guys, but when I eat sugar or caffeine, I, I'm, I don't want to sit still, you know, especially as a child. I have a six-year-old. He doesn't sit still when he eats super sugary stuff. So they're eating sugary breakfast. They're not drinking enough water. Um, they're going to class. They're not eating their lunches, mm -hmm. you know. If anything, they're eating like an artificially flavored orange milk that is again with the artificials in it that are affecting their brain function. Um, you know, we have the nerves in our stomach, they start sending messages to the brain before we even put food in our bodies. Mm. So, um, you know, so how can a child pay attention in class if they're either hopped up on artificial substances or if they're hungry yeah. and dehydrated? So, 
Are it's you a very oh, big issue to me. Yeah. Are you finding that you have a lot of some, um, demand or support from other parents? Um, I am. A lot of parents are like, yeah, totally. These kids should be eating good food. Um, you know, like I said, I'm very new to this whole thing. Um, the thing that. Um, and what is your goal? Like, what would you what like to What is my goal? See? Mm -hmm. um, Definitely, first and foremost, the removal of artificial substances from cafeterias. Okay. So anything that is artificial, has like crazy artificial preservatives in it. So, you know, we can get down to looking at every single ingredient and in every single product that's put into a cafeteria, but it's pretty simple. Just something that doesn't have a shelf life of many months, okay. you know. Um, I think food should be made to order for these children. Um, I know there are many companies and I'm like in the, re in the middle of researching, you know, what different cafeterias and what different kitchens and also what different um, sources there are in Pittsburgh to source locally. I know um, there's a couple places who um, they will make sandwiches and wraps, breakfast and lunch, fruit cups, all that stuff made to order, send it. They do um, things with, uh, you know, local shops and with schools. Yep. Um, so that's an option for kitchens or for schools that don't have kitchens. Um, and schools that do have kitchens, um, again, I'm still doing the research, you know, okay. finding out what everybody's serving their kids. Um, but I just know that uh, having a sugary diet while you're in school um, is not okay. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, um, I, I completely understand, and I can tell that you are yeah. or you are yeah. passionate about this issue, and I believe that you have a public hearing coming up. I do have a public hearing go coming up. Um, so. Uh, the board holds their public hearings every month. Um, their next one is coming up on August 24th. Um, it's from 6 to 8 in the evening. I am going to just go and let them know that this is an issue. This is something that we're raising awareness about. Um, it, there's a petition going on. There's a petition going on um, that, you get, that anybody can get from me. I'd be happy to email them to me. Uh, email them to... Them. Feel free. Go ahead. You can. Um, sure. how, how would parents this get in touch with you for time. more information? Um, if uh, <laughs> if parents need to get in touch with me, I can send them a. The easiest thing to do is sign the petition. If you're a Pittsburgh resident, um, 18 and over, um, or if you work in the education system in Pittsburgh, I think you can sign it. So um, my email is jes dot w i n g h-a-r-t at gmail.com um, and I can email you all sorts, of, all sorts of nice information on what to do with that um, and if you are really feeling up for it come to the public hearing on the 24th that's from 6 to 8 um, you do have to register for the public hearing um, I have a phone number right here you can register for this public hearing a week before um, and leading up to noon that day so that number that you would want to call is 412-529 3868 um, and let them know that you are going to testify on behalf of uh, improving school lunches and bringing nutrition in schools. Um, pretty much anybody we're looking for is anybody who has experienced um, experience the benefits of nutrition themselves personally, mm -hmm. um, anyone who has seen um, or experienced any behavioral issues with their own children or with children in schools. Um, you know, to anything to that like. They're looking yeah. for Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, well, with the time that we have left, I do want to um, turn back to Sequoia because you're recently um, taken on a new role at A-plus schools. Uh, you're one of our parent organizers. Can you give us a, a few statements about what you're going to be doing mm -hmm. and why it's important to the work of parents to take action through A-plus schools. So uh, myself along with two other regional parent organizers will be connecting to families to inform, engage, and mobilize the morale education issues in Pittsburgh Public Schools with our mission being 100% graduation, 80% college completion or um, trade school or you know those types of schools mm -hmm. completed once they graduate. Um, we also want race to no longer be a factor in achievement. So we wanna make sure that all of our students are graduating, all of our students are achieving uh, in Pittsburgh public and beyond. So those are just some of the things that we'll be doing. Um, on August 29th, with the disparities and suspensions 
Um, we have been working for the past few years around restorative practices and restorative justice. Mm -hmm. So on August 29th, I believe it is, yep. um, there is an opportunity to engage with uh, black elected officials, uh, folks from A-plus schools, other parents, and we will sit and have a conversation about restorative practices, restorative justice, and what that means in Pittsburgh Public Schools. And that um, panel will be held at the uh, L.C. Hillman Auditorium at the Kaufman Center yes. in the Hill District um, from 6 to 8 p.m. on August 29th. So we do hope to uh, have our audience turn out for that. Um, very quickly, can both of you tell me, because I, I just love this, you're, you're basically putting into practice now the, the, the action that you guys are doing. So you're going to be sharing other um, kind of your tools and techniques with other parents. Could each of you tell me one, two, three things that you would share with other parents on how to take action? Hmm. On how to take action? <laughs> or, or the first step to um, action. I think some parents are probably situation. hesitant. They yeah. probably believe that they don't have a voice or that mm. it's difficult for their voices to be heard in school buildings. But both of you have proven that that is uh, a falsehood. So how, what, would you, what would your advice be to other parents? Um, my advice to other parents? Definitely um, your voice is so powerful um, as a parent what comes out of your mouth is law. You know that with your children and the rest of the world should know that too, definitely. Um, you know, and once you find that passion um, to just be able to put that in a clear and concise message, I don't know if I'm doing that very well, but to, <laughs> to, so, that way, so that way when you talk to other people, you can be like, oh, yep, that's it, okay, let's go, you okay. know. Well, uh, <laughs> it looks like I just got the, the cue that we're, we're out oh. of time. So Sequoia, I apologize, <laughs> but okay. I'm going to jump in here and I hope you enjoyed this edition of A Plus Schools Education Update. I'd like to once again thank Sequoia Reed and Jessica Rosario for joining us today. If you have questions about what's happening with A Plus Schools or if you would like to learn more about either of these campaigns, how you can get involved with the uh, parent organizers or the uh, improving school lunch or school meal um, campaign, you can contact A Plus Schools at www.aplusschools.org. You can also leave comments by tweeting to me at A Plus Schools or send an email to info at aplusschools.org. Uh, feel free to check us out on Facebook, and if you're watching online, take a moment to give us your feedback in the comments section and like the video. I'd like to thank PCTV21 and our generous funders and individuals who make our work possible, and we'll see you next month. Thank you very much. Thank you.